and little bit plain it, I made a backflip ability for Sackboy. You might have seen the original on Reddit, but I spent a week improving it to make it flip in both directions, as well as left and right. I'll be showing you how to do this, and how to make four directional flips. Alright, so I started with the Sackbot, because it's easier to troubleshoot any problems than my logic when I can see the circuit board clearly. I set it to Sackboy because the Sackbot option has an annoying squeaking sound. The broadcast chip is for putting the animation onto the player. I set it to all in range, so it's in multiplayer, and infinite range to 16 layers, so it's the entire level. The Sackbot circuit board has this chip in the middle, so I'm using a microchip instead, so there's nothing in my way. I use the control needle to detect the player's button presses. If you set it to receiver and control the binary as player, you don't have to be inside the control needle. So as you can see, the outputs light up when I press the buttons on my controller, even though I'm not inside. The default jump height depends on how long you press the X button. This is a problem because our flip animation is going to depend on the height. So we're going to make our own jump so we have a consistent value for the jump height. I used the mover to make my own custom jump. Left right was set to 0 and up down was set to positive 4 so it moves up. I set it to 80% for acceleration and deceleration so the jump's gravity looks more realistic. When I hold L1, it flies, which I didn't want. I wanted it to go up for a short amount of time. One way to do that is to use a timer. 0 0.2 is a good time for a short jump. And I set it a countdown, so only stay out there for that long. So now when I tap L1, it is a short jump. We can put it on the broadcast ship to set it on our sackboy. It's about the same height as the default jump. We can measure it over here to make sure. If you want the jump height to be lower, then lower the speed. So at 3.2, he jumps like this. I want mine to be slightly below his normal jump, so 3.7 is good for me. So you see here, you can spam it to fly, which is cheating. I fixed this by using a counter set to 1. I connected L1 to the counter and the counter to the timer. Now he could only jump once, but we need a way to reset it so he could jump again. We're going to make it reset when he touches the ground. There's actually an option for that in the state sensor, so just connect that to the reset input. So even if I spam L1, it won't let me jump again until I land on the ground. It's important to know that the jump movement is only half of the backflip. The second part is the flip animation, which happens at the same time. It's easier to time the animation to the jump, since the flip depends on the jump height. The flip duration is going to be controlled by a timer. Since we're using a sackbot, we can clearly see what animations we're choosing. The backflip is an acrobatic and it's called acrobatics too. We're going to set it to positional and connect the timer to it. That means that the timer controls the position of the animation. If we set the timer to 1 second, then the animation will play for 1 second. It doesn't look too good right now because we didn't add any rotation. We're going to use the character rotation trigger to do that. If we set it to positional, that means the timer controls the position of the rotation. We're going to connect it to the pitch input. This setup is a good way to make sure Sackboy only rotates for a single cycle. It also works for yaw and roll. Now we can test it on Sackboy to see how it looks. The first issue is that he's doing a front flip, not a back flip. We can reverse the rotation by using a knot gate. We're going to connect the timer to the knot gate, and that should go into the rotation tweaker. Now he does a back flip, but our second problem is that the animation plays backwards. To fix that, you can set the animation to any negative speed, like negative 10. The specific number doesn't matter since the speed is controlled by the timer, but negatives makes the animation play in the opposite direction. Another thing we need to adjust is the speed of the animation, so it looks good. 2 is way too slow, because it doesn't even finish the animation. And 0 0.5 is too fast. We increased and decreased it by big increments to see what the problem was, and now we're increasing it by small increments to fix the problem. I want the animation to end right before its feet touch the ground. That's almost it. I'll increase it by two more. That's not too far from where we started, but a small change does make a big difference since the animation is 0.5 seconds by default, so really short. We're going to lower the blend time, 
because the beginning of the animation might be getting cut off. For a fast animation like the wing, setting it to a low value or zero would be best. If we set it to 0 0.30, the first part of the animation would get cut off. But 0 0.30 does work well for slower face animations like setting an RPG hangout and some movie animations. A low value would look very natural here. But for a backflip, a low value works fine. It looks better, but we could also change the end time. You can't see the animation changes on the sackbot at negative speed, so set it to positive for now. So you see, he starts at an upright position and then bends himself before straightening out. The rest of the animation is just him adjusting his arms and legs a bit. We wanted to end when he's in an upright position again, so 0 0.5 is good. He looks more flexible, but now you'll notice that the animation stays active. We can see what the problem is by placing the logic on the sackbot. So you'll notice that the counter resets, but the animation doesn't. That's because this position is controlled by the timer. So we're going to connect the counter to the blend strength input, so when the counter is off, the animation blend strength is zero, which means the animation isn't visible. When we test it on Sackboy, it looks better, but then you'll notice the rotation is still active. The rotation trigger doesn't have an input for turning it on and off, so to reset the angle, we can place it in a microchip and connect the counter to it. So when the counter is off, so is the animation, because the counter is only on when the animation is active. When the counter is off, so is the rotation. Now I could do a flip and run around like normal. We're gonna make it change layer with an in and out mover. Let's leave it at 2.6 for now. And this option makes it move back a layer. The speed looks good. If we set it at 12, it's way too fast and it looks unnatural. 0 0.5 would be too slow. And he's still moving back when the animation ends. Anything around 2 looks good. Right now, it functions as a double jump since we made our own custom jump. It honestly looks sort of cool, but you could fix it if you don't like it. We're we'll gonna add an extra condition for the flip by using an end gate. So now, you have to be touching the ground and pressing L1 to start the back flip. Connect the L1 button in the state center to the end gate, and connect that to the counter. So you see the L1 output lighting up, but it won't let me flip unless I'm on the ground. And again, since the double jump is pretty cool, removing it is optional. Sometimes when you're flipping, there's this bug that happens, but we can fix it. To fix this, copy and paste the timer and set it to count up. Then connect the output to its reset input and to the counter's reset input. Connect the counter to the timer. This means that when the animation is over, you can do the flip again. It works the same as before, but this seems to be more reliable than using the state sensor. You can also add a cool sound effect. I'll show Swish, which is in the Swoosh category. Then connect the counter to the sound so it plays when the flip starts. Now we're going to make it flip in the opposite direction into the front layer. Copy and paste the microchip and connect R1 to the empty input. Then change this setting to move at once so it goes into the front layer. You also have to rotate Sackboy so he's facing towards the back. You can do that by plugging a 50% battery into the yaw input. 50% makes it face the back. 25% makes it face left. And 75% makes it face right. All of this is only true if the animation is facing the front by default. So now your Sackboy can backflip into the front layer and you can still flip the other way. But if you do both flips at the same time, they sort of blend together. You should only be able to do one flip at a time. We're going to use end gates to add an extra condition for each flip. So connect L1 to the first end gate and connect that to the microchip. Then connect the NOT gate to the end gate second input. The counter from the other microchip should go into the NOT gate. So when you press L1 and the other flip is not active, you can flip towards the back. You would do the same for the other flip, but with R1 and the counter from the first microchip.
Now it only does one flip at a time, but if I hold down both buttons, it alternates between the two. We can use a self-resetting counter to prevent this. That way it only activates the instant that you press the button. A self-resetting counter is a counter connected to itself. It only detects the exact frame that something triggers. So if I hold L1, the light on the right only triggers for a split second, but the light on the left has L1 wired directly to it, so it stays on for as long as I press L1. Using a counter as the pulse switch, like we did here, is really useful for preventing players from cheating by holding a button. So you would connect a one to the pulse switch and that to the end gate. And then you would do the same thing with R1 for the other flip. So now if you hold both buttons, it only does one flip until you press R1 or L1 again. It would be cool if we remembered a rotation when flipping towards the front. We are going to use the counter set to 1, so it has a memory device. So when the animation ends, which is detected by this timer, the rotation is kept at 180. We are going to put a rotation tweaker set to positional and connect a 50% battery to it and a mega chip. And then connect the counter to that mega chip. I accidentally connected the battery to the pitch input and now he's on his head. Now when I do a flip, it remembers my rotation, but I can't flip again. And that happens because I didn't disable the rotation. So you see the counter? When I do a flip, it activates and it stays active when I flip again. The rotation that's part of the flip logic blends with the new animation speaker. So we're going to connect the counter from this microchip into this counter's reset input. That means that when the flip is active, it disables the other rotation. That fixes the problem, but when we try to do the other flips, the rotations blend together. We're going to add an OR gate. To make it so when either flip is active, the rotation gets disabled. So connect both counters into the OR gate and connect that to the reset input. Now we can do both flips without any issues. The rotation should also turn off when you move around or jump. We're going to add two more inputs to the OR gate. Connect the left right input and the X button to the OR gate. Before you test it on your Sackboy, make sure the counter is set to zero so the rotation is disabled. You'll see that the rotation resets when you move around and when you jump. So yeah, we got everything working and it just looks really cool. Now we're going to make him flip towards the right. The in and out move was set to 2, but we don't need it anymore, so we're going to set left to right to positive 2. Setting this battery to 25% will make him face left when he flips. After he finishes the flip, he should face left until he moves again, so set this battery to 25% as well. If we test it, you'll see that Slackboy flips towards the right. Now we're going to make him flip towards the left. So copy the logic for flipping right and place it over a logic that was for flipping backwards. Setting the left right speed to negative 2 will make him flip left. He should be facing right, so set the battery to 75%. After he flips, he should still be facing right, so set this one to 75%. Like before, jumping with X should reset the rotation. Moving with the left stick should also reset it. And of course, you shouldn't be facing right while the other flip is active, which is represented by the counter. So now we can flip left and we can still flip right. Sometimes when you're flipping back and forth, there's a bug that could happen. It doesn't happen all the time, but it looks like this, like he's flipping backwards. On the circuit board, when this happens, you'll see that the two counters that control the rotation could be active at the same time, which we don't want. We can fix this by using a selector to remember a flip direction instead of the counters. Set it to three ports and take the wire that went into the counter and plug it into input 1 of the selector. Plug output 1 into the rotation microchip. Then you would do the same thing for the other flip logic.
connect the OR gate into the third port. The output isn't connected to anything, which means no rotation will be active. We only need one OR gate, so delete the other one. We also don't need the counter anymore. We get test server solution actually worked by using two sackbots. The one on the right has the old logic and the one on the left has the improved logic. As you can see, the bug only happened with the old logic so we fixed it. This works because the selector only allows one output to be active at once, which means only one rotation can be active at once. Normally, you flip this far, but you could cheat by running and flipping at the same time to go farther. You can also run and flip in opposite directions, which messes up the movement. To fix this, we're going to use a gameplay speaker. Set it to 0% movement so you can't move. And affects only character, so it works with the broadcast chip. Then connect the counter to it, which means when the animation is active, you can't move around. Copy and paste the gameplay speaker and connect the other flips counter to it, so it works with both flips. So you see that when I move, the left stick's output lights up. But when I flip, I can't move even though I'm pushing the left stick which means the player can't cheat anymore. Now we're going to make 4 directional flips, so make the circuit board bigger. The logic that has the mover set to positive 2 should go on the right side of the board. That's the logic for flipping right. The other logic for flipping left should go on the left side of the board. The control nader, or gate and selector should go in the center. Make the circuit board bigger and then place the logic for flipping back a layer at the top. The logic for flipping forward to a layer should go at the bottom. This setup will make the logic easier to understand when we start wiring everything. You should label the control nader to make this less confusing. Place a direction splitter for separating the left and right signals, and another one for up and down. Wire each right stack output to the right direction splitter. Alright, so moving my stick right is the positive output, moving it left is the negative output. For up and down, up is positive and down is negative. This also works for the left stick, but I wouldn't use it for backflips because of the default player movement. You could use the d-pad, but I wouldn't because of the sackboy motions. But if you're using a controllable sackbot, this isn't an issue. Then connect the positive output to the pull switch at the top. The negative output should go into the pull switch at the bottom. The other splitter's positive output should go into the pull switch on the right, and the negative output should go into the pull switch on the left. Now we have to set up the rotation again, so set the selector to 4 ports and connect the OR gate to the 4th input. Delete the counter because we have the selector now, and then connect the count up timer to selector input 3. Then connect the 3rd output to the microchip with the rotation. Set the OR gate to 6 ports and connect the counters from the microchip to the inputs. This means that any rotation from finishing a flip should be disabled if sackboy flips towards the front or back. If we test it right now, the player faces the left, so make sure the selector is set to 4 so no rotation is active by default. When we test it now, we face the front and we can do backflips in all 4 directions. Right now, we can do diagonal flips, which is cool, but it can be glitchy at times. Sometimes it doesn't change later correctly. Other times it makes you jump higher. You could remove diagonal flips if these problems bother you. You should only be able to flip back a layer if your analog stick is not moving left or right. If it is, you can't flip forward a layer either. You should only be able to flip left when the stick isn't being pushed up or down. This also applies to flipping right. You'll see that on the sackbot, when the stick is pushed diagonally, it won't do a flip or it will choose one direction. You can raise your left arm, but you can't raise your right arm without doing a flip. This is sort of a minor issue, but if it bothers you, I'll show you how to fix it. Place a NOT gate and connect R2 to its input. Then set all 4 any gates to 3 ports. When we connect the NOT gate to the empty inputs, this means that you can do a flip, but only when you're not pressing R2. So now, we can lift up both arms without any problems and still do a flip. You can do backflips off of blocks in the left or right directions, but for flipping into the layers, the game's automatic layer change gets in the way. This is the same layer change that happens when you jump, and now it's affecting your backflip. Place a gameplay tweaker and set disable automatic layer change to yes. Then affects only character, so it works on the broadcast chip. So now, you can flip off the block, but you can't jump onto it. This is usually a key gameplay element in levels, so this might be an issue for you. Open up one of the flip microchips and place a tag and set it to backflip. 
connect the counter to it, which means it's only active during the flip. Copy and paste the tag and do the same thing for the other flip mega chips. Copy and paste the counter, which is set to 1, and connect it to the gameplay tweaker. Then place a tag sensor and set it to green, and to new label, and type backflip. And zero range, so it doesn't affect other players. Make sure the tag sensor is set to detect tags in the set mega chip yes, since the tags are in this mega chip. Connect it to the counter, and place the state sensor that's set to falling. Connect it to a not gate, and connect that to the reset input of the counter. This means that when you're flipping, the layer change feature gets disabled, but it turns on again once you're not falling anymore. The touching ground setting didn't work too well for this, which is why I use falling with a not gate instead. Now we can jump onto the block and still flip off of it. But you can't flip onto the block. We can fix this by disabling the physics. If you set a physics tweaker to collisions off, this means you can walk through the block and do a backflip. So we're going to disable the physics, but only when you're above the block. We're going to use trigger piano for the detection logic, so set the game to small grid and place a 2x2 two two square, one grid space above your block. You can make it invisible by setting opacity to 0%. Place a microchip and put an impact sensor inside of it. Set it to include touching so it works with non-physical materials like trigger piano, and set collisions to all players. We only want to disable the physics for a short amount of time, so connect it to a countdown timer set to 0.2 and connect the timer to the physics tweaker. Now we can backflip onto the block with no issues. And as you can see on the circuit board, that's because the collisions get disabled for a short amount of time when we're above the block. The way we used the grip panel was similar to using a player sensor, but the player sensor limits you to shapes like these. By using the grip panel and an impact sensor, you can make your own custom shapes for accurate detection. Just make sure you set the sensor to include touching. We can't flip onto this block unless we copy and paste the sticker panel and physics tweaker. Make sure the sticker panel is over the entire block. But if the flip doesn't work over here, then switch the impact sensor to include rigid connections yes, and then switch it back to no. I don't know why that bug happens, but that's how you fix it. And now, you can flip onto here. If you placed your sticker panel too high, that could cause issues. Your soccer boy might get stuck in the block, but you can fix this by moving the sticker piano down a little. This shouldn't happen anyway if you place it on a grid. If you fall into the block, it squishes Sackboy. This happens because the block's physics turn off and on again quickly, which causes him to get stuck when he lands on it at a high speed. So we're going to make it so the collision only turns off when you're doing a backflip. Select the impact sensor and set it to require a tag, green, and a backflip. So now when I fall, the collision still turn off. That only happens when you do a backflip. If you want to be able to flip over a block instead of onto it, you could copy and paste it in not movers. Then you would wire the timer to the new one. Now you could backflip over the block. You might have noticed Sackboy twitching when he flips over blocks. It's more noticeable for here. But you could fix that by adjusting the in and out movers for the top and bottom microchip. Set them to not allow pushing because before they were trying to push the blocks back a layer, but the blocks were set to static, and this caused the twitching. So turning off the setting fixes the problem. If you want to flip farther in the left and right direction, like over this long block, then increase the speed of the mover on the right, and then you would do the same thing for the one on the left, but it would be a negative number. So now you can flip farther. You could use this backflip for anything you want, like a combat dodge or a pool dive. If you want to know how I made the other dives to my level, I made a video on that. 